threw off my groove. I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. The Disney logo, as recently as 19 years ago, used to get in and out within 13 seconds. And you bet your ass I'm sending this movie, because modern Disney logos abandon this sensible approach in favor of 30 plus seconds of self fellatio I'm almost certain that this is a shot at me pointing out that you sending movies for something a whole other movie does is kinda stupid. So here's two sins, one for sending this movie for something other movies did, and one for trying to respond to me but doing it in a roundabout way. Pussy. Will you take a look at that? Pretty pathetic, huh? All narration deserves a sin, but some narration deserves extra sins. And David Spade narration definitely falls into that category. For me, this is pretty weird, considering this is probably David's best movie role. Like, ever. And he also has the perfect voice for Cusco. Like, can y'all even imagine someone else doing this role? Think about how much worse this movie would have been if this was Kevin Hart. Exactly. Long before Cusco knew he would be a llama, he had a llama comb and a llama rocker. Apparently his folks used the always controversial foreshadowing style of parenting. As per usual, CinemaSins fails to do even a 10 second Google on a movie they're making thousands of dollars on. This movie is set in the Incan Empire, and if you knew anything about the Incan Empire, you'd know that they regularly used llamas and how important they were to that culture. Here's something on your level. Inca Empire for kids. I mean, do you think Disney pulled llamas out of their ass? I am offended by the rapid fire royal responsibility montage here. We're trying to show how lazy he is, but ultimately I blame the society that has encouraged that laziness. At least he's an emperor doing this. I mean, imagine a democratic society electing an official that half-asses their responsibilities. Think of how many people could die in a four month time span. Pretty sure Cusco is better than that. An enigma and a mystery in Mesoamerican history. Peru is not a part of Mesoamerica. That's right, we're doing geography sins today, and if you don't like it, you can shove it up your atlas. Oh, so you can figure out Peru isn't Mesoamerican, but fail to recognize that llamas are important in Peruvian culture. You're either picking and choosing what to send or half-assing your job. Both are sins. I guess. I mean, whatever I have to say to get through this awful opening song. Imagine sending Tom Jones. Then imagine sending Tom Jones singing in a Disney movie. Then imagine calling that Tom Jones song awful. That's worth these many sins. It is time for you to choose your bride. What is it with Disney and old-fashioned marriage practices? It's a major plot point in approximately 58% of their animated films. I do enjoy the irony of you watching a 20-year-old movie about the ruler of an ancient South American civilization and asking why it's old-fashioned. Not to mention Cusco finding a bride isn't even a minor plot point in the film. Beware the groove! That might be difficult, because if I've learned one thing from D-Light, it's already in my heart. Two sins. One for a pop culture reference that not only has nothing to do with this movie, but is also one the target audience for this film wouldn't have been old enough to even know. And another for bringing up D-Light! This is Yzma, the Emperor's advisor. Living proof that dinosaurs once roamed the Earth. Old people are old, and that is hilarious. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Look at these wrinkles. What is holding this woman together? God damn, this movie hates old people just for existing. Or the movie is characterizing Cusco by portraying him as a vain dick. You know, the thing you send the movie for earlier? Cusco is a dick. Cusco is a dick. Pull the lever, crunk. Run lever! Well, that's just bad lever design. I always suggest setting- No, 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 no. Sending this classic scene for literally any reason. Just like the 60s Batman on TV, this slide ride down to the secret lair somehow changes their clothes on the way down without slowing any momentum. I get we're playing by Looney Tunes rules here, but at least give logic a passing glance occasionally. Apparently you don't get we're playing by Looney Tunes rules here, because if that were true, you'd stop trying to make sense out of something that breaks real world logic on purpose. This is an animated film where the main character is turned into a talking llama. Do I need to say more? I'll turn him into a flea, then I'll put that flea in a box, and then I'll put that box inside of another box, and then I'll nail that box to myself, and when it arrives, I'll smash it with a hammer! That is a garbage plan, and by involving the Postal Service, you've made your crime a federal one. Pretty sure in order for a crime to be federal, it'd have to be committed within a federation. Oh right, the poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. I'm not even going to allow Jeremy to speak for this particular sin, and instead allow you to enjoy this scene unmolested and ding the ding. I am one hungry king of the world. What James Cameron says about an hour before lunch each day. Jeremy says random words because this 12 minute video wouldn't be over 10 minutes otherwise. This salad is comprised of oak leaves and cherry tomatoes so large they are almost certainly plumps. Or... 
they're almost certainly regular tomatoes. Cusco doesn't notice that his neck just extended two feet, even though his vision perspective had to have changed as well. He just keeps talking. This movie is f***ing lazy. The absolute irony of calling something lazy for continuing to talk after that horrible audio splice. I am so glad I was unconscious for all of this. Thing I wish I could say about the movie ends up in the movie. Oh, okay, I see what this is. CinemaSins hates the Emperor's new groove. I don't know what that says about CinemaSins' taste, but I'm pretty sure that's sinful as shit, as reflected in the sin counter. Shoulder morality cliche. When you just call something a cliche, you are implying it's a bad thing and that movies shouldn't use them. The problem with this is that if you're appealing to as wide an audience as possible, the usage of cliches is entirely unavoidable. You can't make a piece of fiction without them, lest you risk alienating a particular group of people. Considering this is an animated Disney movie, I'm fairly certain their goal was just that, to make something easy for even children to understand. What I'm saying is, this was a stylistic choice opposed to a contrived one, and you really need to learn the difference. Raise it number two. Look what I can do. What does that have to do with it? No, no. Kronk would amazingly be excellent at CinemaSense. Listen to that, guys. Jeremy just admitted CinemaSense's perception skills are on the level of Kronk's. That's a bigger self owned than when Herman Cain caught COVID-19. Um, what's with the chimp and the bug? The bug's legit, but yeah, there are no chimps in Peru, so... Yes, but there are monkeys, and that's a monkey. That's not as impressive as my loose tooth! See? <laughs> me sideways this is a horror film yep along with my babadook video and now this jeremy really really hates kids uh, hi all right movie you've now turned your narration into a complete fourth wall break i think you think you're deadpool and i know deadpool deadpool is a friend of mine and you sir are not deadpool why oh why do you compare every fourth wall break with deadpool why not funny games or space balls? This movie is 14 years older than Deadpool, and I know you're not referring to the comics because Jeremy doesn't know shit about comics. Also, considering we know he eventually gets unlamed, is he telestrating this movie with us before the end of the story has even happened? Look, movie, anthropomorphic transformation is one thing, but now you're messing with the laws of time and space, so you might want to calm your meta a bit. Except you know the movie begins in the middle, before the conclusion of the film, as that's where Cusco's narration begins. Remember the beginning of this video where you were complaining about David Spade? Jeremy Fane's ignorance cliche. I know you. You're that whiny peasant. Emperor Cusco? How the f did he recognize the voice? That is a David Copperfield level of what the f man. Jeremy just asked, how did someone recognize David Spade's voice? Nope, that's the sin. I'm leaving it right there. Holy f what is this monstrosity? The spikes, the head plate. Did I miss the part where this takes place in Pandora's version of Peru? What the hell is up with the wildlife in this jungle? This is clearly a stylized chameleon, Jeremy. Jesus. Including the humans, everything is stylized in this film. Unless, of course, you believe llamas look like this instead of this. Hit the road, Bucky! Something I yell at the screen during most MCU movies somehow makes it into the movie. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin in the movie cliche. Though it's a fairly well-documented fact that the squirrel population of Peru has a predilection for balloon art, they have never been known to use red- Skip! I'm not sure exactly when we should have been done with the people misinterpret mouth-to-mouth -mouth as a kiss trope, but it may actually have predated color film. And this movie takes place in a time that predates film altogether. Now what, bitch? Someday you're gonna wind up all alone. And you'll have no one to blame but yourself. This is the same thing I said to my college girlfriend shortly before she f***ed my roommate. Oh god, the dreaded college ex-girlfriend sins have returned. You know, coming on the heels of talking shit about dated tropes, this seems expressly tone deaf. Great job, cinema sins. This movie suggests that doing nice selfless gestures for egomaniacal heads of state will make them rethink their selfishness. And... <laughs> Yes, I think we all agree that Trump is a shit human. Hell, even Republicans are beginning to repudiate the bastard. But this? Mother flurkin' laugh. Why would the now presumed dead emperor's former advisor automatically take the throne if he disappears? Listen, I don't proclaim to be an expert in pre-Columbian culture, but I assume that since Cusco was never married and has no next of kin, the chain of command would move to the highest ranking official. The movie is obviously stating that this is Yzma, and considering you didn't even know how important llamas were to this culture, I'm going with the movie over you. Don't shake unless you mean it. Fun fact, don't shake unless you mean it was the title of the woman's sexuality course I taught for a semester on the importance of the authentic female orgasm. So who thought it was a good idea to allow Jeremy to make a cringy sexual joke in a video about an animated Disney film while at the same time censoring bad words? Is it just me or is this backwards as hell? Delayed gravity. You mean in the movie where a drink turns a human being into a llama? 
These bats, when scared, fly directly into a llama's mouth. Life finds a way, I guess. Jeremy makes a Jurassic Park pop culture. I hate this jungle. Then why did you get out of your Cronkmobile? No one made you. You said you were tired, which makes no sense, because you're literally just riding, and this is clearly an excuse for the highest of jinx. Apparently, Jeremy has never heard of being tired of sitting. Yes, that is a thing. Squeaky, uh, squeak, squeaker. Ten seconds ago, you were carrying on a fluent conversation with this squirrel in English. Not sure why you need to play translator now when it can clearly understand what she's saying. I just cannot understand the logic used at CinemaSins headquarters. Dude, you are watching a fantasy film where ancient Incans use English and are upset at Kronk, a human using a mixture of squirrel and human speak to talk to a squirrel. For f**k's sake, man. Well, that's a very specific singular exclusion to make. Bring in any animal you want, just not a llama. It's almost like they knew they were coming. Or, llamas were very important to this culture, so much so they brought them everywhere. You know what? Never mind. On second thought, make my omelet a meat pot. Meat pot. Can I order the potatoes as a side dish? I'll have to charge you full price. <sighs> hey, how about a side of potatoes, my buddy? God damn, this is an episode of Frasier. Is that a shot at this movie or Frasier? Either way, it's sinful as shit. Oh, oh, I get it. What? You don't want to take me back to the palace. You want to keep me stranded out here forever. Christ almighty on a cracker with grape jam. F***ing hell on a cracker with grape jam and an oyster. Jeremy eats crackers with grape jam and oysters. Ew. Every time Furless Sully raises his arms, you can clearly see his undershirt matches the same brown as his skirt, or tunic, or culottes, or whatever he's wearing. My point is that the same material- At this point, I've given up giving a shit what Jeremy is talking about, but since he brought up Sully, I'm more interested in starting an internet argument. This movie is better than Monsters, Inc., and didn't have to rely on being a knockoff Toy Story to be seen as good. You take that back. You take that back, you absolute monster. Monsters, Inc. is a goddamn national treasure. Actually, a bug's life is mathematically superior to both of them. <laughs> you rank amateurs. Everyone knows the best Pixar film is The Incredibles. Have you seen Elastigirl's a Ask me the same question and the answer is obvious. Wally, -E. where else am I going to get commentary on the state of human decadence and the importance of AI? Finding Nemo? Get out of here with that trash. How did you get back here before us? How did we, Kronk? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. When the only thing in your movie that makes any sense are the meta jokes about how none of the movie makes any sense, perhaps you should have put a little more thought into making some of your movie make sense. Or that could be the joke, Jeremy. You know, the things your fanboys claim your videos are all about. I'm pretty sure asking for things to make sense in a movie where there is human transmutation is a pretty fruitless endeavor, but here you are. Then I bet you weren't expecting this. <laughs> the idea that Disney just made an evil old lady vaginas are scary joke, and that is somehow not the strangest part of this movie, is all you need to know about the insanity of this film. I don't know. I've seen some evil old lady vaginas, and let me tell you from first-hand experience, they are scary. I mean, have you ever seen a wart where a clit should be? Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Awesome! Oh wow! Like totally freak me out, I mean right on! The tour, sure, number one.